Tomorrow, we're going to look for morning clouds, afternoon sun, highs back into the 70s. I'm Cairo 7, Pinpoint Meteorologist Nick Allard. It is 66 degrees in downtown Seattle. I'm Ursula Royteen. Download our app to listen on your smartphone. Cairo Radio 97.3 FM. News and talk. Powered by the Pacific Northwest. The Big Lead is brought to you by 3010 Weight Loss for Life. The Dory Monson Show on Cairo Radio. This is The Big Lead. I apparently don't know anything about how to do a radio show. I don't know anything about the media. I don't know anything about the First Amendment. I have a completely skewed view of everything that I thought we were supposed to be about. Coming to you from the Carter Subaru studio. Welcome! We're also streaming on Facebook Live. I, I'm all goofed up, or so I don't know, up is what down, happened? dogs or cats, black what is happened? white. Is it because of the rain? What happened? I've always thought. Do you oh, want to no. ask that? Oh, no. I've always thought that we're supposed to be a watchdog of government. Yes. That's our first role. That's our primary mission. That's yes. why there's a First Amendment. So we could offer some checks and balances. Yes. And in the big lead here, I saw a great Chris Ingle story on King 5 that I'm going to play some cuts from because he discovered this taxing district down in Tacoma where people have been paying over a million dollars in taxes and getting nothing in return. Nothing. And all of their commissioners are unelected. So we got that. We got our Carolyn Osorio's coming on at 1230. Down in the King County Sheriff's Office, they've made somebody a chief who has not gone through the police training. And this woman's making $183,000 a year. Some of her prior experience is that she was on the gambling commission and an aide to Dow Constantine. Hmm. She wears a full uniform, like the cops who have actually earned that uniform, and, and she gets... A fully decked car, and she carries a gun. Is there any precedent for that? Well, Sue Rahr, the former sheriff, and and we'll have uh, Carolyn tell the whole story at 1230, but uh, Sue Rahr, the former sheriff before Urquhart, said that there's some tremendous liability concerns. If somebody who hasn't gone through the police training is carrying a gun and driving a police car with a siren, if there's an accident, if there's a shooting, if there... The, the liability exposure is through the roof, and this person's making 183000 So I see this Chris Engel story, being a watchdog of government. Carolyn, who's been a, being a watchdog of government, that's what I try to do with this show. And then I see these... Oh, not, no. Oh, no. Nicole, oh, no. Nicole doesn't want to make me, or these let me use people. the word. These people. People who sleep with other people for money, but I'm not going to use the word, at the at the Seattle Times. No, and, and again, the Times does some good work. But did you see this little... I, I am backing out of this one. Wait, what? Did you see the feature the Times did in their Sunday magazine? My wife just pointed this out to me last night. You know that Sunday magazine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever it's called. It used yeah. to be Pacific, but yeah. I don't know if it still is. So they do uh, a big feature that ran on Sunday about how King County Executive Dow Constantine went to see the Rolling Stones in the Kingdom in 1981. And they have a picture of him in the crowd. And then they have another picture of him three weeks ago when the Stones were at CenturyLink in the front row. And it's just this, let's... Let's just make sweet, sweet affection to Dow Constantine, the King County Executive. And I didn't realize that we were supposed to give government officials this kind of sweet love because I always thought we were supposed to be a watchdog of government. Uh, So he's not allowed to have, like, free time? Why would you feature Dow Constantine? In this, there are a lot of people. I went and saw the Doobie Brothers New Year's Eve 1976, and then I saw them a couple years ago at Tulalip. Did the Times do a big feature on me? Well, well actually, the didn't someone do a big feature? I remember being quoted in this big cover story about you. It wasn't the Times, but. No, it was a uh, show week. Very <laughs> fair. It's the first time anybody's been fair to me in, in the media. I just. Look, we got all these tips. The Dow Constantine. 
will what he calls badge his way into concerts, and I believe it was you too, where he goes with one of his King County Sheriff security detail, and he makes them flash their badge to walk him into these concerts, and then he goes in the front row to uh, you know has the best seat in the house with this horrendous abuse of power. Uh, has anybody covered that he badges his way in besides us? We've gotten those tips from lots of deputies. Does anybody else cover the fact that he has sheriff's deputies driving him around while he's out drinking so he won't catch a DUI? No, no, no. He's untouchable. He's, uh, he's part of the love story that's out there. I just, of all the people, with all the crime that we've been uncovering on this show about the guy, and the fact that the newspaper hasn't decided to pick up on any of our coverage, because even though I give them credit when they break stories and and we'll do a follow-up, when we break stories, especially if it's about a Democrat politician, which is the only kind we have around here, I get people all the time, why don't you say anything about the Republicans here? We don't have any. So uh, let's try to be a watchdog of government and not a lapdog. That's all I'm asking. That's my simple request. Dow Cut. Oh, Is it I Pacific wanna... Northwest Magazine? Probably. I want to see how much he paid for his tickets. That's all because I know he has a history of badging his way in to sporting events and concerts. And I want to see how much Dow Constantine paid to be in the front row of the Rolling Stones a few weeks ago. The only reason I'm smiling, Dory, hmm. is because you have shared on the air how every once in a while you like to get a free ticket. I, when was the last time I got a free anything? I pay for my concert tickets. Oh, you want to hear how much I'm paying for one <laughs> yeah. coming up? Oh, my goodness. If I could badge my way in. <laughs> yeah, you don't badge your way in. No, but. I don't abuse my power. Crying out loud. So anyway, nice little love story there, Seattle Times, for our King County executive. He's the greatest. Okay, next up in the big lead. The big lead. I sense a Dory rant coming on. And, yeah. <laughs> and think, that wasn't it? That wasn't a rant? <laughs> I think that was the rant. Now this is tax dollars now. Now this will be a rant too. <laughs> So I started doing math about a story I told you about yesterday. City of Seattle says they are donating three pieces of property to develop affordable housing. One of the pieces of property is in Finney Ridge. I just got an email last night from uh, this woman whose family has lived on the parcel adjacent to the one the city is giving away. And she you know, was telling me her family's been paying taxes on this parcel for something like 80 years. And now the city of Seattle is giving away the parcel right next to theirs. And the city values it at $1.5 million. A developer is going to build 19 condos. The city's going to pitch in an additional $700,000 to develop it. So I started doing the math on all of this. This was a parcel that was owned by uh, Seattle City Light. So the developer has no land acquisition costs, $1.5 million. The city's going to give them another $700,000. It's actually more than that. The city said $2.2 million for these three parcels. So... If you just break that into thirds, another seven hundred thousand dollars. So the city is giving two point two million of your and my dollars, and then the developer says he's going to spend six point four million developing these nineteen condos. So that's eight point six million dollars for low income condos. They say. They said that, and that works out to $452,000 per condo. They said that uh, that some of these homes are going to go for uh, households making less than $70,000 a year. So 
and they value them at 250000 they say. But the cost to build them is 452000 each, and you're valuing them at 250000 How does that work? Who's getting rich off of this? And a listener last night reminded me, if it's City Light that's giving away this property, that uh, <laughs> City Light in the past has a history of not being exactly the sharpest deal makers in the world. <laughs> the listener sent me the link last night. It was so awesome to just go back and reread and revisit this story. Do you remember a story that we covered on this show? If you're a longtime listener, about Five and a half years ago, Seattle City Light was the victim of one of the most ridiculous bilking jobs ever. There were these uh, two guys who went to the city of Seattle, City Hall, downtown Seattle, and they were wearing, (laughs) this is so awesome that they pulled this off, and you can only pull this off if you are dealing with idiots. On the other side of the of the deal. So these two guys walked in wearing full Indian garb. You know, the headdresses and the tasseled leather suede coats. One guy introduced himself as Chief Little Bear. The other guy was Joe Wolf. And they said, hey, we're running an arts and crafts program for disabled Cherokee kids. Now, their names weren't actually Chief Little Bear and Joe Wolf. Their names were Michael George and Jim Costa. So they talked their way into a meeting with then Seattle City Light Superintendent Jorge Carrasco. And they said, look, (laughs) they hold up their arms, look, we wear copper bracelets. And they said that they had these copper bracelets, necklaces, and other trinkets. And they said, will you donate some copper to our charity? Well, the head of City Light asked them for a business card. And the guy said, oh, no, we we don't have a business card. And we have a bus outside with a full load of disabled children. And they said, can we just have the copper? And so instead of vetting them, instead of making sure they were who they said they were, Crasco said, yeah, we'll give you some copper wire. And he said, go down to our storage lot in the international or the industrial district, and uh, you can have 100 pounds of copper wire. Now, that's not legal to just give away your and my stuff, but that's how government around here operates. So the men go down there, but they didn't take the 100 pounds of copper wire. They managed to load up. Oh, they didn't have a bus full of disabled children. They weren't Indians. They were able to load up 42,500 pounds of copper wire that was valued at more than $120,000. And uh, I think they eventually found all the wire down in Fort Worth, Texas. But they fell for this. I mean, this isn't the most elaborate, sophisticated scam of all time. They dressed up, talked their way into me, And why? Because the city of Seattle is so consumed with political correctness then and now. If this is to help disabled Cherokee children, yes, go take our copper wire. Now, it's the same scam. It's just different scammers. Yes, give us the property. Give us hundreds of thousands of dollars cash, and then we will sell it to low-income people. We will all be so noble that nobody could dare question it. Except for that jerk on the radio who tends to question these things a lot. So uh, whether it's the copper wire scam or the condo scam, these guys, the city of Seattle, they're not very good stewards of our money. I'll tell you that right now.
All right, next up in the big lead. The big lead, Dory Monson show exclusive. Can you give me a uh, kind of I'm kind of a sexy mood today, as everyone can hear. You have any sexy music there, Andrew, by any chance? Some of the, kind of warm things up a little bit. Yeah, I like this. I just wanted to respond real quick to an email I got from Diane in Tacoma. Wrote to me at 6.50 last night. I listened briefly today to your radio program. It's always briefly. You just happen to listen. And then five hours later, Thoughts of me still swirling in your head. You sit down at a computer. I listened briefly today to your radio program and was aghast at your hatred toward anyone on the left. Spewing all the nastiness you could conjure up was pretty disgusting. Currently, we have the most corrupt administration in the White House that has ever been in power. Certainly in my lifetime, and I'm no longer young. Oh, those words spoke so much to me, Diane. I know that you don't briefly listen to the big show. You listen three hours a day, five days a week. Because when you listen, you're once again young. I remind you you of when life was full of daring adventure. When you didn't just happen to catch a radio show. And be so obsessed with it that you sit down and write emails to the host five hours later. A true crime family who makes the mob bosses look like choir boys, she wrote. Oh, and Trump is rapidly losing his mind. Diane, let me just say, I'm really glad you listen. I'm glad that I can make you young again for three hours every single day. And I'm glad I stay with you for most of the other 21. I'm sorry I'm taken. Because if you think I can make you young with my crazy rhetoric, oh, imagine if we went dancing. Which I know you will. Imagine it. Drop me an email tonight, Diane. See ya. And that is your big lead for today. The Big Lead on Cairo Radio. Our exclusive, Carolyn Osorio. She dresses like a cop. She wears a gun like a cop. She drives a car like a cop. She makes $183,000 a year. That's a lot more than your average cop makes. And she hasn't gotten the specialized cop training? Wait till you hear this. Yeah, we'll watch dog government. It's coming up next. This hour of the Dory Monson Show is brought to you by Insulation Northwest.